Welcome to Women in Leadership. My name is Reagan Jackson and I'm the program director for Young Women Empowered or Why We, as we like to call it. Uh, we are a Seattle based nonprofit and our mission is to cultivate the power of diverse young women to be creative leaders and courageous change makers. And we do this through transformative programs within an intergenerational and collaborative community of belonging. As you know, the impacts of COVID-19 have been intense. And so the purpose of this series is to highlight some women in our community who have been really showing us what leadership can look like in the face of adversity. Today, I'm here with Candice Chin. Candice is a 70-year-old Chinese-American woman born and raised in Seattle. She is the mother of four amazing children and the grandmother of four with, with another one on the way. Though currently retired, Candace worked as a union carpenter for seven years when her children were young. Then she went on to become the first female bridge maintenance general supervisor for the city of Seattle. Afterwards, she moved to Beijing and worked for the U.S. Embassy in public diplomacy. She returned to Seattle to earn her MBA from Pinchot University, and she has just an extensive history of community service and was the co-founder of Why We. Uh, she's been a mentor and has served on our board for almost 10 years. Welcome, Candice. Thank you. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. So how, how has COVID-19 impacted your life? Um, I would say, like many people, I recognize that something was really on the scene. I think back in the beginning of March or the end of February, mm -hmm. a little like a tsunami. When the tsunami happened, you know how the oceans really move out and people are wondering, hmm, that looks different. Now, some people who decided, well, it's not such a big deal, but I had a sense that that was the tsunami. So um, I went into self-imposed uh, quarantine on March 10th, the day that my daughter and my granddaughter uh, flew back to Ecuador, where they're now in lockdown since two weeks. Yeah. So self-imposed. That's intense. Well, what, what have you been doing during this time? Well, I like, I'm always an observer of what my mind is doing. I'm, it's just kind of curious. And so I just want to tell a little story about how the first week was, okay, I can eat all the snacks I want, potato chips. <laughs> and then after about a week of that, I thought, well, that's not really sustainable. And so things have evolved since that time, since I'm with myself, I recognize that it, it was an opportunity because you're, you're with yourself and your mind and your feelings inside your home. So I started thinking about and reflecting, especially as a Buddhist, about what that means when say you're in a situation you don't wanna be in, that I had to start thinking about what am I doing for myself to take care of myself so that I can come out of this quarantine being a grandmother, being a friend, being alive. And so that I went to the interior of my mind as well as who are the people in my community that I really need to reach out to. So I quickly um, evolved and started keeping a journal like every single day I write down what am I doing myself? What am I doing with the community? Who have I reached out to? And then the evolution of that led to what can I really do or contribute to, to fight this coronavirus? And as a sewer, I've sewed a lot of different things. And so that led me to do research on, and I landed in this group called Stop the Bug, which is a Facebook group that I joined. And from there, what, what have you been up to? Well, after reading a lot of different posts, I realized that masks, making masks that might be N95 proof or equivalent was going to be difficult because with fabric, fabric stores shutting down and everything shutting down, the only thing you could do is order online and soon supplies for different kinds of fabric was drying up. So... I, I kept looking to see if there were different kinds of um, styles that I could sew. And now that the CDC has said everyone should, 
a wear mask, I thought, well, part of what I'm doing is I can make masks for people, friends, family, and donate to different organizations. Um, and I have a friend who works in the hospital. And so the style mask that I'm making can go over the N95 and possibly save that mask, you know, keep it from getting too clogged up. So um, what I found out was that there's probably more than 3,000 sewers, not just from the Northwest, Pacific Northwest, but all over the, the United States that are trying to come together and say, what can we all do? Mm -hmm. So there's a need for masks and there's a need for gowns and it's pretty straightforward sewing. And it, of course, during this time of self quarantine, it gives me a sense of dedication and contributing in a way, even though I'm locked up at home. Will you show us some, some of the masks that you've sewn? Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, fun functional and fashionable. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. these That's are beautiful. This is uh, watermelon seeds, but and it's reversible. Uh, <laughs> so, it's what it looks like, and it ties around, and it's just cotton on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, originally when I started making masks, I I had some elastic, so. This is another version where it has pleats mm -hmm. and it has a, um, a piece of aluminum foil in for the, for the nose, for a bridge for the nose and it goes around the ears like that. But um, it's just kind of quickly, you kind of go through the cycle of what kind of materials need to be used, what's effective, who is it for? And so, yeah, this is sort of my, most evolved design and anyone that wants to work with me on it I can um, certainly give that information yeah uh, well yes I, I would love it if you could share how the community can support you but first I'm, I'm just curious like do you consider yourself a leader and um, why or why not um, it's taken a long time for me to think about what that is. I think traditionally we thought about leaders in my mind as I was growing up was, oh, that's someone that stands up and says thing and other people follow. But I think more and more the way leadership shows up is um, being a leader in your own life, living your life and being true. So I would say, yeah, I am, um, I think a leader, can be many things. I don't really think about how I look to other people so much as I'm thinking about what can I do that will make a change because I, I honestly think that at the end of this quarantine, however long it's going to be, I'm going to be able to say I did something, you know, I made a difference. Staying alive for family and friends, that's important. Giving them encouragement, but yes, I really believe that I, I show my own leadership and yeah. It's taken 70 years for me to say that, Reagan. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Thank you, Candace. Thank you for what you're doing. Is there anything else you wanna share with our youth about how they can be leaders in this time? Uh, I would say that if you're able to reflect every day about how you're feeling in your role in your family, in your friends, and understand that you're a very important person and that however you can find positivity or appreciation is going to affect the community around you. Mm -hmm. And what could you do during this time? Especially what I'm focused on is making masks and gowns. I have a pattern that I got off the internet and um, I can, I can send links to people. If there are people who want to sew or want to contribute in this effort, I'm looking for donated sheets. Like they don't have to be white. They can be any color or pattern as long as it's cotton and poly cotton and any size because we'll cut hospital gowns out of it. Uh, I could use some help 
from individuals who would like to learn how to lay out with pins and cut them out and I'll get them delivered or I'll pick it up. So I think the best way is to reach me via, well, via my phone number or email. I don't know if you want me to put that or you'll put that in the recording. Yeah, um, yes, we'll, we'll put a way for, for them to reach you at the bottom of this video. And uh, thank you, thank you for your time and for your, your service to our community. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Reagan. Mm-hmm. <laughs>